See, many people take for granted the words that they say, probably because we've used words so much in our everyday lives that we don't take time out to pay homage to them. Well, today, I would like to take time out to do just that by telling you a story of how the power of words helped save the life of my little boy and how his personality was the cause for a healthy community to spring up in the most unlikeliest of places. Now, it started about seven years ago when my then pregnant wife went for a routine doctor's visit. Once there, the doctors told her that my son that she was carrying only had a 25% chance of surviving the pregnancy. Now, the doctor also told her that we may want to consider having an abortion. When she told this to me, I was stunned at first. In fact, we both were because she didn't smoke or drink or do anything that we thought that may jeopardize, jeopardize the life of our son. After some contemplation, we decided to go ahead with the pregnancy and hope that everything just turned out all right. Because of that, the doctors decided to take my son out early in order to increase his chances of survival. Now, in doing that, my son was born weighing only one pound, eight ounces. And with that came a whole host of physical ailments. He had a breathing issues. He had echo in his heart. He even had jaundice, and that's just to name a few. His, his physical ailments was the most severe during the first three months of his life. And I can't count the number of times that the doctors had to rush into his room in order to keep his little heart beating. It was during those times that my emotions just wouldn't stay still. There were some points that I was worried that my boy wouldn't make it. Then there were other points that I was just happy that the doctors were able to save him. Then there were other times that I was just plain angry, especially when the doctors rushed in his room one day and in their haste managed to break one of his little legs. No child should have to go through that nor should any parent. However, I realized that they were doing the very best they could. So I stepped back and allowed them to do their jobs. But in stepping back, I began to wonder, what was I doing? What was I doing to help my little boy? You know, when I was a little boy myself, my dad used to always tell me that it's a man's duty to protect and provide for his family. But there I was in a prison cell, not being able to do anything. In fact, I didn't know what to do. And it was at a time when my wife and my son needed me the most. Now, that's when I decided to try something. I, tried to try, I decided to try something that was simple, and I just hoped that it would work. What I would do is I would go to the hospital every day. I would call the hospital every day, rather, when my wife was there with my son sitting next to the incubator. I would call her on the phone and she would position the phone in such a way that my son could hear my voice. Although I knew that he probably couldn't understand the words that I was saying, I chose to speak to him anyway in hopes that his soul would somehow understand. I would begin my talk with him by saying something like, son, this is your dad speaking. And I want you to know that your mom and I love you very, very much. Your mom is here with me. She's on the phone. And uh, she wants the opportunity to hold you like most mothers do to their son. And me, I wanted the opportunity to throw you on my shoulder and tickle you like most dads do to their sons. So son, I need you to fight. I need you to fight for your life because I don't want to lose you before I have the opportunity to have you. I would talk to him like this for approximately six hours every day. And this wasn't easy to do because I was in a maximum security prison. And I was housed on a unit with 42 other men. And we only had two phones to share amongst us. But the men could see that I was going through something and they rallied around me by sacrificing their time on the phone with their own family members 
and now to, in order to allow my son to have more opportunities to hear my voice. Even the correctional officers got in on it, and they allowed me to have more than my share, all to the benefit of my son. And I was very appreciative. In fact, I took advantage of every opportunity they gave me, and I called them every day, over and over. Until one day, something started to happen. My son began doing things that he never did before. He would look up at my wife with his big eyes and follow her around the room everywhere she went with those eyes. He even began smiling at the sound of my voice. Now this made us so, so excited. I mean, my wife was elated. She was so elated that she ran to the doctors and let the doctors know exactly what was happening. And the doctors told her for us to continue doing whatever we were doing, and they promised to continue giving them the best medical treatment that this hospital has to offer. And together we worked on my son. We did that. And his progress was slow at first, then he began to pick up pace. He began getting better and better and better. It reminded me of the movie Patch Adams starring Robin Williams. In that movie, he thought that it was important to use humor in order to supplement medical treatment. Now, although what we did was slightly different, the concept was the same. Because we were both looking to put a good feeling in the patient in order to help that patient mend. And in this case, that patient was my son. That was seven years ago. And now he's a healthy seven-year-old boy. <laughs> Although he's not as big as other seven-year-olds his age, what he doesn't have by way of stature, he makes up for with his enormous personality. I mean, he has this effortless way of walking into a room and bringing joy into people just by looking at him. And I get to see it firsthand when he visits me on the weekend, or I either get to hear it from others who my son have affected. Now, I remember one day this guy came up to me, and he started by saying, your son is so amazing. You know, I had a visit by this young woman a couple of days ago, and your son walked up to the young woman and asked her, are you pregnant? When the woman responded yes, my son said, congratulations, <laughs> and gave her a big hug. I hear stories like that all the time, both from correctional staff and from prisoners. And when I hear stories like that, I get filled up with so much pride at the thought of my son having such a profound effect on people. It's like it all started with the doctors at the hospital. Then it trickled down to the men that allowed me to use the phone. And then it affected both the prisoners and correctional staff here at Sing Sing. It's like we all came together because of him to form this healthy community in the most unlikeliest of places. And to give you a glimpse of the fruit of that community, I would like to end this talk by letting you hear my son, Little Lawrence, sing you his favorite song. I read it dead, there I go. Go. A deer, a bear, Milton, a ray, a double good time. Me, a name, a call, myself, but I don't know where to run. So, I need a bullet pack. La, I love to follow, so. T, I drink of German bread. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.